I'm Lloyd Evans, and as many of you know, I'm an atheist. In many of my videos, I tend to be quite critical of religion and the Bible in particular, but in this new series, Faith Unchallenged, I'm trying a different approach. I want to sit down with believers of all kinds and let them express their beliefs freely with as little pushback as possible. I'm leaving it entirely to you, the audience, to reach your own conclusions regarding the validity of whatever beliefs are on the table. For this first episode, you find me and my video editor Tibor driving in convoy down a dusty forest track, having been tipped off that there is a commune of Scandinavian Christians living deep in the woods southwest of Zagreb, Croatia. To begin with, we get lost and are forced to ask directions. Fortunately, there aren't too many people from Denmark living in this particular area, so the locals were easily able to point us in the right direction. So having received some directions, our small convoy is now heading deeper into the wilds of Croatia. This is actually quite an interesting experience for me as someone who lives in Croatia. I've never seen countryside as completely wild and untamed as we're seeing here. It's incredible to think that this has been here all this time, all the years I've been living in Croatia, and I've never, I've never seen this sort of terrain. Anyway, we're heading deeper into the unknown, as Elsa would say. <laughs> and we're hoping that we can find our Scandinavian family. And find them we did. It was very much a clash of styles as Helen, wearing almost medieval apparel, warmly welcomed yours truly, bedecked in my Sir David Attenborough disguise. I was then whisked off on a brief tour of what Helen calls her safe haven, an isolated commune and spiritual retreat boasting an impressive inventory of used tyres where the basic concept seems to involve becoming one with nature and thereby getting closer to God. As horses grazed peacefully in the clearing beyond, I was introduced to two French travellers who were spending two weeks at the commune to assist in creating various structures using only raw materials foraged from the woods. So we were just talking uh, off camera and um, these two gentlemen are from France and they've come here to assist with the building project, with, with creating this environment. That, what were you pulling it before? The safe, safe haven. haven yes. Safe haven. Yes. And you're here to improve your skills with construction and building with raw materials, yeah. is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just like simple construction. Uh, with something you find in the wood or nature. Yeah, fantastic. It's really good what you're doing, but I, I hate interrupting you. <laughs> so, yeah, brilliant. As Baptiste and Clément busied themselves in crafting twigs and string into the beginnings of an earthenware oven that I'm sure would have made Ray Mears proud, I sat down with Helen, eager to learn what had led her to this place and the ambitious project she was undertaking. Helen, thank yes. you for allowing me to come and learn more about your, I guess, mission. Is that a, a reasonable word to use? Yes, it is. Yeah? And you're welcome here in Safe Haven. So perhaps you could explain um, about your belief. You, you, you're clearly a woman of, of quite deep and profound um, faith. So perhaps you could ex you know, describe that for me. I am a um, non-denominational believer. I believe that the fully gospel, uh, the whole Bible is inspired by God and written for us to be taught to live with him. And uh, that his uh, commandment still stands, not the Mosaic uh, laws, but the commandments, the Ten Commandments, uh, written by God's own finger on Mount Sinai. Um, there for us to live by, and that Jesus Christ is God who came on earth, um, gave his life on the cross, um, on the third day, raised from the dead, and it's for us to know him and to have a personal relationship with him, because without that, there's a cut, cut. 
<laughs> I'm going to say, I become like brr, the preacher. I no. don't want that. Well, we, you say without <clears throat> that, can, please continue. Without that, what does... No, without, what, without, without Christ, um, without a personal relationship, mm. you don't know God. Right. You can be a religious person. You can know the Bible all the way. You can know all the right scriptures. You can mm. even, you can stand and you can proclaim his word. But he says your proclamations will not get you anywhere. If you don't know him, you have nothing. And I noticed uh, when we were talking earlier, you distanced yourself from the word religion. You, you don't yes. consider yourself a religious person. Why is that? Religion says, don't do that. Don't go there. And you have people who have been starting a specific religion. In the Bible, we have what they call the Jews. Uh, the Jews is, is, is just two tribes of the whole 12th tribe of Israel. But most people, they only see the Jews. And they are religious people who follow the Mosaic law. If I go into a religion that be witness of Jehovah, SDA, Pentecostal, or where, they put a cloth on, you know, you, it's like you must be to fit in to this. But you have to start to read the Bible yourself to have your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Obviously, you're familiar with the fact that I'm a former um, Jehovah's Witness. Yes, uh, um, I am. And when we were mm. talking before, you mentioned that you have had some experience with Jehovah's Witnesses. Are yeah. you able to describe that? Um, I was not a Christian when I grew up. I was not a believer. Um, my grandmother, um, who died when I was six years old, she was a deep believer in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, we went there, I think, two or three times a year. And what she told me in those years, it stuck, sit mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. When I was a teenager, yes, I could pray the Lord's Prayer and so on, but I did not know who God is. And um, I was in a turbulent years uh, with uh, marriage, children, and a lot of things went wrong. Um, living my own life, um, it must be chaotic, you know. It, it, it was doomed to do that. And I was very close to commit suicide in one point of my life uh, with two small young children. And standing there in my kitchen, I hear the voice of God saying, Seek the God of your grandmother. And I was just stopping there. Um, the only thing I knew about my grandmother's God was, His name is Jesus Christ. He was crucified on a cross. Um, he gave his life for me to forgive me all my sins. That's how much he loved me. And if I believe in him, I shall live with him. That's what I knew. Um, and that there is a heaven and a hell. And my whole world stopped. And, and honestly, I can't remember the next six months. I got out of this uh, violent marriage and all the things that oh, I'm was... I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then somehow the witness of Jehovah, or Jehovah's Witness, how you say, they came to my door one day. And I was looking for company. I was looking for this. I started to seek or to figure out who is my grandmother's God. And um, I studied with them. They came with this Bible, this book. I call it a book to read. And I couldn't read it. It was just, there was no sense in it. And I was, I kept saying, I, re I read with them for one year. I was just like, this is not my grandmother's God. My grandmother's God is not the archangel Michael. He, he came from my grandmother's God. He is God the most high. He came from, from heaven to earth to give himself. He became lower than an angel for our time. That's how great his love is. Just to give everything up for you and for me and for everybody. 
So this is not my grandmother's God they're preaching. One day, my father, he got, he got cancer. And um, yeah, as I said, I was studying with them for a year, around a year. And he, my father, he got cancer. And um, I have this aunt, my father's sister. And um, I haven't seen her. I had not seen her since I was a very young girl because in my family, we didn't have contact with her because she was a very strong believer. She was standing on the street preaching Christ, you know, to everybody <laughs> coming her way. And um, my mom didn't like that. And my father, he was just like, okay, sis, stay away. So we didn't see her, we didn't know her at all. But one day she was just there standing in front of my door. I had not spoken with anyone of my family members and told them that I heard the voice of God telling me to seek the, the God of my grandmother because they would have thought that I was crazy and I needed to go away somehow. So I was just, but then she was at the door knocking and I opened and this huge lady, she's in front of the door and she's standing with a Bible and she says, I am here to present your grandmother's God for you. I was just like, whoa, what's happening here? And, um, she came in, she didn't seek my friendship. She didn't seek to be my auntie or anything. It was just this lady. She was just here to tell me about Jesus Christ for my salvation. And she came in and we were just standing in the kitchen um, next to the stove. And she started one scripture after another. And she was telling, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, this is your God. This is Christ who came to earth. He loved you so much. You are dearly uh, created in his image. You know, you are a pearl. You are perfectly made. You are a treasure and he wants to save you from this world, from yourself, from sin, from everything you have done wrong. He shed his blood. Do you believe in that? She's like, yes. Okay, let's go on our knees. And we went to knees and we prayed to give the Father, the Lord God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, my life. I asked him to forgive my sins and to come into my life and to change my life. But I had a, a dear friend, Jede. Um, she had tried several times to get out of the, uh, of, um, the organization. She grew up in it. All her friends, her family, everyone was there. Um, she just uh, bought a new saddle to start, um, yeah, she had a few horses, um, she did, wanted to start western riding and they found her dead two days later. She couldn't cope with it anymore, so that was hard. She couldn't cope with shunning. She couldn't cope with the shunning, yes, I think they had been there. Um, she tried to, she, she went out and in because the whole family was there and they kept pushing in her and pulling in her and, and yeah, it was, it was too much for her. It was too hard. The pressure mm. was too much. So she ended up in the car with this extortion pipe oh, in the car. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it was too much. Yeah. I had another friend. Um, she had been, um, molested from her father and every, everybody in the church knew that her father was molesting both of the children, both my friend and her brother had been assaulted by their father. And still she was taking care of her father when he was sick and wanted to die. But they shunned her uh, because she didn't want to be, they couldn't understand, how can you be in an organization where they accept that the, the parents are molesting the children and still they expect you to be good and to be nice and to take care of them and accept to be next to the people that you know that they didn't do anything to stop this? I mean, she was 17 before this stopped. She was 17 mm. before she ran away from it all. It's a huge problem in Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's something. It's, a, it's something I've been covering in my work, yeah. uh, explaining the the policies that they have that keep uh, child abuse covered up, so that the police can't get involved. But I see that 
if you're covering up something, you are guilty yourself. Mm. They are talking about being guilty to the hellfire. And I see that if you keep silence when a child is molested, you are guilty to hellfire. Because God, he says, let the small children come to me. No one shall hinder that child because it's an innocent child. And it's made in God's creation. It's dearly loved by God. And your punishment will be hard the day you stand in front of his judgment. If you have been silent. And then you can find no other relief than hiding yourself in the true Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because this anger from God, what you're doing to children. Because adult people, mm. they can defend themselves. And they can get out of it by time, you know. They, mm. can, they can do something to defend themselves. Mm. And they are, they are surely supposed to do to defend themselves. Because God, he also says that he loves you and you must love your neighbor as yourself. But if you don't love yourself enough to defend yourself, to fight for your own rights, mm. then how can you say you love your neighbor? Mm. But to be silent when a child is molested and abused, I see that as one of the biggest crime. And can you, do you think that organized faith or, or religion um, makes it easier for abuse to be covered up? Because when you have a, an organization that's looking after its own interests rather than necessarily the interests of individuals, it's going to put itself first. I know it is, even mm. in the Pentecostal church, mm. you know, they're covering up their own mm. people mm. for what happens around, you know, mm. because you're in this safe environment and you are, if you are one of the, the, the leaders and the elders, you mm. know, it's very easy to have a high ego and um, it's more easy to become what they call them narcissistic. Yeah. It's very often that you find the pastors and the elders to be narcissistic person, people. Um, it's very easy to, to get into a situation where you are misusing people instead of serving the Most High God. I, I feel as though you, there's palpable evidence that, again, it's possible to be religious, or sorry, to have yeah. faith. <laughs> to have I know faith, you don't yes. like that word. <laughs> no. Nope. It's possible to have faith without it being dictated for you by by an organisation. And what one thing that ha has has come about through your faith is um, is it safe haven? Is that what you're calling it? It's this. We have a non-profit organisation, right. Go Project God Buffet. Okay. Um, it started as a book. God, he gave me some poems and some daily words over a mm -hmm. period of time. And he said, gather it together in a book. So that's what we did. Um, um, and um, I was in Serbia uh, over the years. We had some soup kitchen and so. And the work we did in, in Serbia was through this project, God's Buffet. Talk us through the process if, if that's a better way of putting it, what was the process that you, or, or the, the journey that you went through to end up here? What was the journey? Mm. The journey was from beginning where he started to speak to me from Isaiah 2, 2. Um, that in the, the, the end of the days, <coughs> he will... Um, I cannot even in, in English. I'm trying to wrap my, my brain in English in the same time it's going in Dan okay. Danish. The house of the law shall be built upon the mountains, and from there the word of God shall go out. And every time I prayed, those words kept coming to me. And um, it has been taking, so every time he sent me, for example, when he sent me to Serbia and when we were in Bulgaria, I was like, is it here, Father? Is it here? But in, this, in, in, in a few years also between, I laid down this dream, this vision I had. I laid it down like maybe it was just not supposed to happen or <clears throat> maybe it was just my own thoughts. Or, and then he took it up again. 
he reminded me, but this is still, go to the land with the mountains in the south and um, build for me a camp uh, to prepare for the end of the days, to, to prepare. When everything is falling apart, when I come and I will divide the sheep and the goats and the whole world will seem to be in chaos, it's time to build that camp. And um, we were looking, we were in, in Spain, we were in Bulgaria, we were in Hungary. But it was not before, in 2017, um, in the end of 17, um, I had this dream. I woke up one night, it was not a dream, that's, that's not even right to say it was a dream, because I woke up in the middle of di the night, I had heard he, he knocked on my door, and I was like, who's knocking? If it's you, Father, then come in and sit with me. It's a shame it wasn't in the daytime. Hmm. It would have been a bit... Many times God comes when man, he's resting and right. he's in silence, you know? And this was n not in the night. Mm. It was early in the morning. It was right. actually around four or five o'clock in the morning, okay. but it was in my best sleep. So, um, so come on in. Now, I stayed in the bed. We, we were living in a caravan. Um, we had been in, in Bulgaria and um, we were living two years in a caravan in Denmark. And um, so I, w I stayed in the bed and I just felt this being coming into the, to the caravan. Like it, he was sitting there up in the other end. It's eight meter long. And I just felt it. I, and then I heard this, this voice inside me like, are you not standing up? Are you not coming? And I was just like, Full of a shame that I just lay there and not greet my father when he's coming in the night to talk me, to me. But honestly, four o'clock in the morning, or you're just sleeping, you know, it's just like... So I, I got up and I sit there and I didn't know if I should feel foolish or what, you know, because if I speak to people and say, I, I feel I sit with God, with the Spirit of God is so close, you know. And in the same time, it's like you don't see anything. You just sit there with yourself and you know God is close. You feel this holiness, you know. So I'm just like, Father, forgive me because I'm, I'm in this situation. I don't know, you know. And he made me to look out in the morning. <clears throat> and when I look out of the window, I didn't see the morning. I saw a lot of chaos. I saw wars. I saw famine. I saw a lot of things that I did not want to see. And I say, I'm scared, Father, what is this? <clears throat> and he say, it's coming. And I will divide the sheep from the goats. Are you ready? When and you say it's coming, what, what it's coming. What, what's coming? The end. Right. The end is coming. It, mm. Everything is coming to an end, but the end is coming with chaos. And it's not a nice time, you know? Um, and he said, are you ready? Ready? No, I'm not ready. How can I be ready for all this, what I'm seeing, you know? You know when you're trying to prepare for many years and you're trying, you know when he says, when, when this time come, you know, you must go and prepare for him a place. But when he starts to talk to you directly, now it's time to go and actually find this place because now it's coming. You're like, no, I'm not ready but because he speak I will get up I will get up because he speaks not for what I feel not for what anything just because he speaks um, and the next morning I just I just start to pray and it came naturally we have to pack all this together we have to pack it and go um, and we started to drive. We went to Spain for a year and... Uh, is that the caravan that you were in? No. No, it's a my, different caravan. My caravan, eight meter, is still in Denmark. We okay. don't know how to get it here. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, this is just a small one, just... Mm. Um, and we started to look for this place and, uh, yeah. And then all this uh, corona situation came up and we... We just knew that uh, we had to get out of page. We couldn't sit closed into a to a a, a, a town or or a city when the time come. 
um, that it was time now to, to also to get out of Hungary. I just felt in my spirit they will close off Hungary. There will be no way that we can move around in Hungary without getting vaccinated. We are not vaccinated. Um, we are natural person and we believe that that's the best way to stay so. Um, and he said, cross Jordan into the land of, with the giants. And immediately we just knew that that was Croatia. But we're a long way from the Jordan, aren't we? Yeah, we are. But Jordan is a place of faith that you have to... It's a metaphor, is it? Yeah, you have to move some things in yourself. Do you know how difficult it was for the Israelites to cross Jordan? They well, have to wasn't trust. the water parted for them? Or they something? have to trust that okay. God will move the waters away right. to move all this and so when he says go into jordan to the cross jordan into the land with the mount with the giants just like giants well oh, that's trouble you know <laughs> yeah I, I haven't seen many giants while no I've been but here. you know we have a mountain actually we got an apartment 100 kilometers from this place and one day a pastor he come to sit and spend time with us and he said, we sit in the balcony, and he said, you know what this mountain is called? No, the sleeping giant. I'm just like, wow, isn't it a great father we serve? Isn't it a mighty God? Exactly what he says, go to the land with the, mount with the giants. With the sleeping giants. With the sleeping giants, yeah. yes. But actually, the witches who are in this area, they are trying to wake him up. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Like it's even foretold. Everybody know that they're gathered, you know. Every but there are witches gathering to wake up the sleeping giant. Yes, there are. Okay. So that was just what a mighty God we serve. Every word he has spoken, you know. Mm. We were told that before the winter end, we had to find this place. And um, we started to look and couldn't find anything. Uh, in the beginning of March, the month of March 21, uh, my daughter is at the internet and um, by God's grace, she stumbled over this internet site with a lot of commercials and um, there was this land. It was too expensive. And normally when we call Croatians to, to handle something with them, they will hang up on us because we don't speak Croatian. Uh, <clears throat> or they will simply just... Um, refused to talk to us. So it was just what to do. And they say, okay, you write him. You can't pay that price. It's too much. We have to divide the price over four, four times over mm. a year. And everything else is in the hand of God. And he wrote back, okay. Okay. The only thing was he was afraid that it was a scam, that we were children, because who will move out six kilometer inside in the middle of a forest in an abandoned village for 30 years where everything is fully grown up with trees? He's nothing. So that's, that was the final move to establish safe haven. Was that the... was there. Okay. I would say the first step. <laughs> Because now the real work starts. I think you yeah. said there were some pictures of when you first arrived here and it was very, very wild. Yes. Um, but you've, you've done a lot of work and I noticed um, there were some French gentlemen here, um, Baptiste and Clément. Yeah. We met them earlier. Yeah. And one thing that I think is really nice about this project is, you know, if, I, if I'm imagining kind of um, a commune that's um, based on on faith in, in the Bible. I'm imagining a place that doesn't allow people um, to to come unless they say the right things or, or agree with the person, with, with the faith of the people who run that place. And what uh, really interests me is that, you know, you, you've welcomed me even though I'm an atheist um, you've welcomed Baptiste and Clement, irrespective of whether they agree with your uh, faith or not. And I think it's really nice that um, you're not excluding yourself 
from people or telling people that, that they can't come unless they... Um, would no, that be... they are more than welcome, you know? Mm. Jesus, he sat among sinners and he spent every opportunity he got to preach the gospel. The thing is that when we are here, you have to accept that we pray before we eat. Right. We read the word of God mm. and I will preach to you every five seconds I get. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> so Baptiste and Clement have had, had you preach to them an awful lot while they've... I don't think so, no. I started out doing that, yes, they have to know what we are and yeah. um, they, they can't start their journey here with us without knowing who Christ is. Mm. So yes, of course, I started out to tell them that mm. the foundation here is the Bible and uh, we, our foundation is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm. In him we believe as the almighty God. They're here for, for two weeks. Yes. And we've... if they leave um, when, when they're supposed to leave and they're, they're still not believers, how would, how would you feel? For me, um, I pray for them, but I can't do anything to save them. The saving job is God's. I preach the gospel. God mm. says, go out in the whole world, preach the gospel, teach people mm. to follow me. Mm. That's what I can do. But the work of salvation is up to Christ. His Holy Spirit will work inside you, but it's also for you to respond to that mm. call because mm. everyone will get a call but how do you respond and according to that respond God will start to work with his Holy Spirit inside you that you can and that you will accept that he gave his life for you so why should you not lay it down for him too but he is the one who transformed people I can't transform anyone the only thing is, I have, when I start to preach this, I can only preach what God has shown me. And I have to go in front of that. So if I'm not what I'm preaching, I will be like an empty bell. Mm. Yeah. So if, if uh, Baptiste and Clement were to, were to leave um, when they're due to leave and they, they still um, don't believe, you know, as you do, you wouldn't um, hold it against them and you wouldn't cut them off or anything. It's not me. Mm. I know God will send someone else on their way. The, he will follow them to the end of the world. They can't hide from him. They can't run from him. Mm. If they go deep underground or all the way up to the sky, yeah. he will find them. So I will not be the first one to preach this gospel. Yeah. And I will not be the last. No. And do you mind me asking, um, you must get asked this by, by people. I, I, I noticed that you're dressed very distinctively. Um, what, what's the thinking? What, is, there, is, it, is there a reason for that? No. As I told <laughs> the lady, in the winter you should have seen me in my full military dress. Military dress? Yes. Because it's much more easy. To oh work right! When so you're you are in like uh, camo gear and that kind of completely, thing. Completely, right? Yeah, the real deal, you know. Okay. So, um, I like this style. Yeah. Medieval style. Yeah. And um, I think it go very well with the thought to go back to the nature because mm. this is back to the basic nature camp without as little electricity as possible. We have water from the well and um, mm. we wash in a sink and it's, it's uh, really back to basic. You and don't repudiate um, modern technology, do you? You, you? you do use what's around you. It's just that yes. you try to, am I right in thinking that you try to use modern things as, as little as possible? Yeah. Right, okay. My daughter works online. It's not, yeah. we are not completely <laughs> cut off, you know, um, but we try to, to mm. get away as much as possible. And that's also the point with Safe Haven. Um, for people to come here, you know, they're welcome to come spend a day, two days, five days. It's not like a campsite where you pay 
to come. Yeah. You know, if you can donate, we will be blessed. Yeah. Um, if you can only work, you have to work a bit. You have to help as you are here. If right. you want to eat, you work, you know. But if you don't have money, work, you know. But if you donate, still work. Yeah. <laughs> because God says that uh, work is a blessing, yes? Yeah. So, so that's... Um, but we don't work all day. We just give a few hours just to, to try to help us a little and, and build it up, you know. And, and how uh, many people, you know, obviously we've, we've met um, Bab Baptiste and Clermont um, um, on, a, on a monthly, in a typical month, um, how many people come or is it still kind of fairly early in the process? So it's not many very people, early. Very early, yeah. yeah. Um, we haven't had people regularly coming here. Right. Um, we tried to hire some people from the village to come and help us mm. uh, with a few things. Um, though it is difficult, we are in an earthquake area mm. and they are very busy um, building up the village again. Mm. And so work power, work forces are very um, difficult to, to mm. hire, yes. Um, we have had a few people from, from work away, but they are not steady workers and they are very shocked when they come here. I can't <laughs> imagine why. We, we have tried to make up the profile, like this is like no toilet yet. Uh, we yeah. hope that Clement and Bapti will help us to, to build uh, one um, toilet Well, I'm here. holding it in personally. But, yeah. <laughs> you can go among the trees, you're welcome. You know, there are trees enough. Yeah. Um, so we hope they can help us um, to, to build just one mm. here. Um, but helping hands is welcome. Who can help us? Not yeah. a traditional toilet, no. A compost toilet. Um, but they come out here and they see, oh, no running water, no, no toilet, no facilities. No, you know, it's too hard for a lot of people because it, it also requires a, a set of a mindset. You have to put your mind into this, mm. that this is something you really want to, to get out from the city, mm. not to smell of perfume, because we don't use perfume here on the land. We only use natural soap. That's why you let me in, because mm. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> you don't smell need, that good. <laughs> you don't need to wash your clothes here, you know. So, okay. No, we have soap nuts and we, we, we boil um, this into a, a soap. Mm -hmm. that we use to wash the clothes and to, to wash the dishes with and, and so on. Yes. Okay. Um, so natural soap, don't come here with all your perfume and your... Oh, really? Okay. Yeah? No, it's not allowed with the real soap and so on because you... <coughs> the land have been unspoiled for the last 30 years. Just leave it like that. That's actually know? interesting because on the one hand, I'm thinking I'd really struggle to survive without shower gel but on the other hand i'm thinking when when you wash yourself with um those products it goes into the so you're trying to keep the, the ground go into you dear every yeah. thing you put on your skin yeah goes into your body you're trying to keep the, the ground unpolluted is yes. that right yeah well that's nice yeah well listen it's been a real honor and pleasure meeting you I really hope we can stay friends and of keep course. in touch. You're welcome. And even without the camera, yeah, I, I, maybe. sort of I felt myself a little ambushed because yeah. our, our common friend, you know, yeah. he, he said, oh, I gave Lloyd this, this number, you yeah. know, can he, can he just come and visit and see? Yeah. And no one was talking about this no, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't mean to ambush I you. I just, I just think your story is um, really interesting, yeah. and I think my viewers will find it interesting as well. And it would be really nice if, at some future point, uh, because we're right at the beginning, it feels like we're right at the beginning, or or in the early stages of your project. Yes, it would be really interesting to revisit it at some future point and see. Yeah, or if you have some. Who would like to come and stay I'm with us? I'm they sure are more than welcome. I to am come sure and that stay. people, at least someone and, watching know. this video, will think this is exactly what I want to. Yeah, bring to do. a tent, yeah. and because we 
bring in a the long tent. Run? Yeah. Uh, don't bring soap uh, with perfume. modern um, <laughs> hygiene products. Yeah. Be prepared to be preached to a lot. Yes, definitely. And be prepared to work or give some money if you're not prepared to work. Is that are those basically the rules? <sighs> what is the rules? Work is work. better than yeah. But um, at least you're not going to work on Shabbat. No, we don't you, work. You keep the... In the Saturdays, we don't work for, we don't take any work for money. Mm. And uh, yeah, if the neighbor come, he's really in trouble. We mm. will go and work there, yeah. but not for money. Yeah, you know, we also feed the animals. Yeah, uh, of which one has just arrived. Yes, that's Brilliant. Amigo. Yeah. <laughs> um, well. And we have three horses here, six goats. Um, mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, Helen, thank you so much for letting us come and speak to you. No, thank you, you for coming. You have a really interesting here, story yeah. and uh, I hope to revisit this story again in the future. Maybe you will come without the camera and spend May time. Who knows? <laughs> thank <laughs> you. My encounter with Helen, matriarch of Project God's Buffet, had been eye-opening. Her brand of Christianity, like her choice of wardrobe, was distinctive and perhaps a bit eccentric for most people's tastes but she is undeniably a remarkable woman of faith and her convictions are sincere and passionately held. More than anything, I value her kindness and hospitality and the inclusivity with which one and all are seemingly welcomed to her woodland retreat, her safe haven. Helen was the perfect interview subject with whom to kick off this new series. Please join me for future episodes in which I look forward to hearing more persons of faith express themselves unchallenged.